this isn't the ocean you hear. This is Modulator Bay. Mr. Basic here. Welcome everybody and thanks for coming. I made this sound environment with modular synthesis with a free program that you can download from the internet called VCV Rack. Three sounds going on here, three main sounds. One, the sound of the water, the ocean, the spray that you hear. The second one, a bird sound. Birds in the distance. And a third, a sort of wood hitting something, making a tone. be like wood crashing against the rocks. Um, my experience with the ocean mostly um, has been in the Pacific Northwest. We have mostly gray, muddy, rocky beaches, lots of rocks, cliffs, things like that, and driftwood. So this is more like my experience with oceans, and you'll hear that in it because I made it, and not someone else. The beaches may sound a little different. Now. The first sound that I'm going to go over is the ocean sound, the water sound, made by this noise module, this utilities module, on the upper left hand side of the screen here. I'm using white noise, just basic white noise, going in to slow pass filter. And I'm filtering out some of those high frequencies, just a few. And then from that filter, I'm going out to a multiple. And one reason I'm doing that is to simply split the signal more. I'm going into four outputs. One sound going out to four sounds. Now, two of those I've got going to the left and right signals of a stereo mixer. So, it's going stereo into one channel, going through a couple more filters to filter out in different stages and different layers more a little bit more of those higher frequencies so you have a little bit different tones of waves that could be differentiated by the ear only ever slightly and then those back out to a second channel so simplified what I've got here is I've got the ocean sound going into two stereo channels that are both panning left and right independently of their own tempos and also as, a, as another le level of panning I've got a layered panning going on from having each of those two tracks of noise having each of those automate their volume up and down on, on each independent sine wave LFOs as well so that the volume is going up and down independently on one channel 
independently of that on another. And then the CV um, into the panning, I, I'm doing the same thing. It's panning left and right on a sine wave. And it's automated panning left and right, same thing, on another channel. So we've got two layers of panning left and right, plus we've, we're panning those two channels sort of on top of each other from also two more independent side wave oscillators. of the low frequency variety. So that concludes what I'm doing with the ocean water sound. Now the bird sound is made by what is called plats in real life, and this is like plats. It's called macro oscillator 2 in VCV rack. Now I can't quite do as much with it as I can in the real life version, um, but for this pur these purposes it worked perfectly and many others it does as well. Um, I like using my favorite mode here, which is the first one on the right, which is a red, a red mode called cloud. And it's normally a cloud of sawtooth waves. And I've got the auxiliary out, which makes it a cloud of sine waves that um, drift off all independent of each other in parallel. Um, based on how far this harmonics knob is up, they decay more and more and more. And each sine wave independent of each other, but happening all at the same time. And this creates for a sort of, you know, sort of the pitch just goes into more and more, more and more ran randomness, exponential randomness, as you could call it. Um, so, uh, what I've got going on there, though, is I've got it going through a filter, but I've got it going through a different kind of filter, which is the opposite of these low-pass filters. I've got it going through a high-pass filter because I want to filter out all the low, low tones out of it and keep only the high tones, right? To make it sound like a bird. And so that's why I'm doing that. Now, although... The only thing I've got to sequence this ocean noise is independent sine waves from low frequency oscillators here. Uh, for the bird sound, however, I've actually got a random trigger to trigger a sound at whatever time I want to trigger it, and in this case being random. And the marbles module, and here in VCV rack it's called Random Sampler, does a perfect job of that. Now over here on the left side of marbles you've got triggers, and on the right side you've got sort of modulations. And I'm using a modulation on this woodsy sound coming from the rings module or resonator module uh, into the volt per octave because it, adds, it, it acts sort of as a quantized LFO, uh, not so quantized to any kind of scale, but uh, it's a lot like a, uh, using an arpeggiator, it has a, it, it puts out a random amount of voltage, but the thing about it is, you can add the spread, and it'll go higher up in frequency and lower down in frequency for the, for the spread of, of things, that, of sounds as they come out, and I like to keep that low because I want to keep it at various woodsy sounding tones and not more metallic bell tones that you get from higher frequencies in this same sound here. So that's what I've got going on here. I've also got one of my bellophones here that I'm using on just one of the sine waves for a, for a wave. Um, I'm using that, a triangle out of that one to vary the dampening a little bit. Uh, mostly down to like dampen it a little bit more, just a tiny bit. Because it's an attenuator, it means it's got negative on one side, positive on the other, as opposed to an attenuator, which is zero at the very bottom, all the way to the value at the top being positive. Okay. 
So, that woodsy sound I've also got being triggered from a random uh, trigger from the marbles module. And I'm not going to go into how to use the marbles module because that takes its own tutorial or set of tutorials to even get started on it. And that's another story. But it's easy to, to say that these are just the way I've got them set up, that these are just going to be nice, nice random triggers that in turn will always do a very good job at emulating nature. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much all we've got uh, for that. But for the bird sound, um, after I go past, past the high pass filter, I've got it going into a molt as well. And this is the part that's really very experimental on my part and not really necessary for you, uh, is that I've split this up into four instead of just two a left and right going into a channel. I've got a left and right going into one reverb, and then I've got another left and right going through another reverb. Uh, one by... One by um, AS Modular, which is just a uh, pretty standard reverb, and Clouds, which I'm using as a pretty standard reverb, but they both have a little bit of a different uh, output effect character and whatnot. Um, Clouds one being quite a bit uh, quieter on the, on the other end of it, even when I've got the gain all the way up. But uh, that's okay because, you know, I work on that on the level of my mixer as well, as you can see with channel 4 being all the way up like that. And because it's coming from the clock, so it just needs, needs an extra push. Right. So, uh, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of messing with having the birds seem like they're being in different parts of the environment uh, by different kinds of reverb and at different, uh, basically different lengths different distances away from you. And that's what reverb generally will emulate, is this idea of how far away is something from you. And that completes, along with left and right panning, that completes the whole 3D uh, environment uh, for you. Except for one thing, which is that, you know, how much lower than your ears is something, or how much higher up in the sky is it. And that's something that you're really going to have to work with something like quad or surround sound. Uh, uh, and that's also done, done with things like modular and VCV rack as well. And so we'll work on things like that in the future when we get a little bit more complex in the patches that we want to show. Thanks everybody for coming uh, to see yet another one of my videos about a way to create the ocean. And in my next <laughs> BC View Rack video that I'm going to use to show you how to create the ocean, I'm going to not use any of this stuff, <laughs> not use half of this stuff anyway, and instead um, I'll be using a keyframing device to multiply these things instead of using molts and that'll clean up what I've got going on here in, the, in pretty much the same way I can, I can do the same thing in a lot more efficient ways. And uh, what should be well noted about modular is anytime you have a patch you've made up, um, it, it is very personal and even within yourself you can always say that you could make this more complicated and that you could add to this, that you could put more layers on or something like that. Um, and at the same time, no matter what your patch is, you could also always say that you can clean it up more and be more efficient and take up less space by using this module instead of that one, or this one instead of that one. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, so there's nothing in that that's right or wrong, is what I'm saying. There's no, there's no feeling bad about the way you have it now just because there's a more efficient way to do it and there's more a way to make it more complicated because there always is. And uh, that's just the thought of the day.
Other than that, I'll leave you with some motion noise uh, for a minute. And thank you all for coming. I'll see you in the next one.